Hey guys, this is Muskan Walwani, your educator, trainer, speaker, blogger, and owning EduCreate. We are talent meets. excellence so today i do create presents 14th talk show on the topic my family doctor a bond of trust for this we have invited our special guest that is dr vijay nichani sir if we talk about his profile or qualification so he is ms that is general surgery f i a g e s that is fellow of the indian association of gastrointestinal endo surgeon f a l s that is fellow in advanced laparoscopic surgery now designation general laparoscopic g i that is uh, gastrointestinal and bariatric surgeon in private practice in door and now laser surgery for protocoly and varicose veins he is a chairman and director at eureka hospital and research center private limited in door his memberships and fellowships he is a life member of ima that is indian medical association he is a life member of asi that is association of surgeons of india ACRSI that is Association of Col uh, Colorectal Surgeons of India AIGES that is Indian Association of Gastrointestinal Endo Surgery SMA that is Sindhu Medical Association now fellowships FIGES FALS and secretary of ASI ICC in 2012 and 13 and president in asi icc in 2021 and 22 now i would like to call dr vijay nichani sir to share his views and opinions on our today's topic over to you yeah. yes muskan the topic today is my family doctor a small tag goes beyond that that this is a bond of trust we need to understand how and why we are concentrating on this bond rather than the family doctor alone right so the first thing that we need to clear here is what is this concept of a family doctor see hum log कोई भी हेल्थ इशू होता है फैमिली में द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट वी गो डू इज वी गो टू द डॉक्टर इन द बेसिनिटी देयर आर सो मेनी अदर डॉक्टर्स आल्सो हु आर वेरी मच स्पेशलाइज्ड इन वेरियस फील्ड्स कोई बच्चों को देखता है कोई बूढ़ों को ही देखता है जीरियाट्रिक स्पेशलिस्ट कोई अस्थि रोग विशेषज्ञ होता है जो हड्डियों को बोन स्पेशलिस्ट होता है देर आर डॉक्टर्स हुटेंड टू फीमेल्स ओनली तो देर दीज आर स्पेशलिस्ट we normally do not go to the specialist right away until and unless we have an emergency we usually go to the doctor in the vicinity now the doctor in the vicinity is again of two types which we do not normally realize we think that every doctor that we are going to is a family doctor not necessarily most of the doctors that we attend to are general practitioners general practitioner may or may not be a family doctor because it is like this you go to the doctor you present your complaints bukhar hai that is zukam ho raha he will diagnose your treatment he will give you treatment for maybe malaria or typhoid or flu or whatever and you go back home and that's the end of the relation there so that's different with the family doctor the family doctor just not does not restrict himself to any specialty he attends to all ages all genders in all stages of life in the family he will provide more comprehensive care to the family he is always with the family well versed with the family and always continues to assess and accordingly treat the patient in uh, according to his family status also there is a background for every disease there is a background for behavior in every family and these affect the the uh, nature of the infections the nature of uh, various health issues which may come in, come up in a family and only a family doctor can attend to 
So he is not just treating you. He is doing more than mere treatment. He is taking comprehensive care of family always. That is the concept of a family doctor. So the next time we go to a doctor, even if he is not publicizing himself as a family doctor, we can always confide in him and build up relations in a way so that he understands our family. He has faith in our family and we have more faith in him so thereby so that he is able to understand even small and unexpected issues in a more finer and a refined way so that he will be able to give us a specific and a personalized treatment. This is what a family doctor would do. Uh, so uh, questions were, some questions are raised. Like uh, your first question was, what is the concept of a family doctor? As you just now you have explained. So I'm going for the second question. Like what are the qualities of a good family doctor should have? Yes. The primary condition which any patient or a family must look for in a family doctor is his training, his credentials, his qualifications. There are so many doctors who are practicing with various degrees. There are so many who perhaps do not even have a degree and they're still practicing. We go to them on faith that we have responded to their treatments, but they may not necessarily be qualified. They are referred to in common language as quacks. Quacks are not really doctors but they become doctors by observing uh, doctors and hospital practices. I'll take an example. We have an architect to make our house. We have also a mason and a contractor who is making the house. The architect gives instructions to the mason and the contractors, they follow. In due course of time, they start thinking that now they can also do what the architect had been instructing them. So they start behaving like architects. They're not really engineers but they, they would build up a house, maybe on a small scale level, on whatever little knowledge they have. But then we know that that is very risky. It can cause any problems. And if there are any issues, he will not be able to tackle the complications. He is not knowing the science behind the construction. He is just doing what he has observed. So it is with quacks also. They've been working on clinics with doctors or they've been working in hospitals as nursing assistant. In due course of time, they think that they have adequate knowledge, and so they start their own practices. What they are doing is just copy paste the investigation format and even the medic medicines that they have been learned. No science behind it, just observation. Whereas a good doctor will have a good qualification from recognized medical university, and he should also have a sound clinical training. That is very important. Just doing a degree and then coming out and saying setting the uh, practice is not satisfactory. You should have some clinical training. This is the first and primary important point that a good family physician should have. The second is that he should have a broad spectrum of knowledge. We saw that the concept of family doctor involves the fact that he should attend to all ages, all genders, in all stages of life in the family. So, a family doctor may have to attend to a child. He may have to attend to uh, an old patient. He may have to attend an emergency orthopedic situation. He may have to attend even females, he or she, whatever the doctor, for uh, pregnancy issues, for various other issues. So there are a variety of issues that a family doctor has to face on the first instance. And he has to be prepared with adequate knowledge to face them. He must be armored with the knowledge so that he would not be at a loss to attend to a patient when they suddenly come up with a new issue. So at least basic knowledge of all the issues and wherever he feels that thereafter that now is beyond his reach, he should recognize this fact and refer the family um, or the patient in that family to an appropriate specialist. Also. So a broad spectrum of knowledge along with the knowledge also that where this knowledge has to be restricted and the patient needs to be referred to a proper specialist. This is what a family a doctor should have, a good family doctor would have. Also, now that he has to refer to the specialist, he should be very prudent in referrals also. He should know what 
appropriate investigations to, done, to be done, what uh, doctor he needs to be referred to now. A simple example is like um, a patient comes to you with backache. Backache or back Now, these days, patients have uh, limited knowledge, but they think that they have a lot of knowledge from the internet also. They study. So, they think that this is a problem. Neurosurgeon, ka, spine surgeon, ka, to spine ke paas chale jati. Koi sochta, nahin, nahin, ye to hai spine. No, this is not a doctor. Spine is a hardy. It's a hardy. It's a hardy. So he goes to the orthopedic surgeon. No, no, this is not my issue. You have to go to the neurosurgeon now. So he is at a loss now. Ye kya ho hai? This is what the family doctor should be able to sort out for you. He will tell you, no, this is your problem, um, which needs to be attended by a neuro or an auto, whatever. And so you will be in safe hands and you'll be guided to an appropriate doctor also. Patients go for investigations themselves. They will go for an MRI, such an expensive investigation, and they do not know which region MRI they need to ask for. And when they come back, that MRI is not giving adequate information. So the doctor says, oh, this was not necessary. You did not need this. Why did you get it done? Why did you spend so much money? You should have got this investigation done. So this will lead you to this um, in, uh, conclusion. And an appropriate diagnosis. And therefore, apart from that, we will send you to the doctor concerned. So, prudence at advising investigations, prudence at referring to a appropriate specialist. Then he would also help you by way of discussing with that specialist to whom he has referred your family status, your economic status, so that that doctor is able to plan your treatment within your budget and within your social status also. Unnecessary people think that going to big hospitals is always good. No, that's also very expensive and sometimes misguiding. So just a good family doctor who is uh, with you for ages with and is working in good faith for you will always do something good for you. But this only happens in a bilaterally mutual relation when each one has adequate faith in each other. The family in the doctor and the doctor in the patient. So there's what? Then once he has referred it to the specialist, he would also be able to provide him relevant inf information about your complaints and about your family. So overall, you get a comprehensively customized and personalized treatment. So this is what a family doctor, a good family doctor would do. Then, again, a very important thing is that he is actually having concern for your family. Like we spoke of the general practitioner. The general practitioner will write a prescription, you will write a few investigations, you go home, take a treatment, and five days later you say, I'm okay, no fever, okay, go back home. But the family doctor will not leave you there. He is always associated with you. He is empathetic. Empathetic in the sense that he always He is always on the lookout that he of your family. He behaves as if he is a family member also. So empathy has to be there. You think that you have this issue and you're not realizing it, but the doctor behind sees it. And even in casual talk, he may guide you, know, this, you have to do it like this and this will be good for you and for your family also. So he has to be very empathetic. To be so, he also has to be very well informed about the health and the economic status of the family. So, sabhi members ke sari family history ka knowledge hota hai and he has to keep himself abreast about of whatever is happening in the family. Then, very important factor is that he should have the ability to listen. People sit before doctors start writing and start uh, complaining, ye ho raha, ye ho raha. So, okay, okay, mein jo kuchunga wohi bata. He ends it up. But a family doctor would not do that because he knows what's going on in your mind and the more you say, the more you will spill out your complaint. He will probably pick up a clue from even a small complaint which you have placed and try to see this is what is happening in our family. So a patient does not realize what he has to say. He just has to confide in the doctor. He thinks that Mr. Te, ye sab bata dena but the doctor should have the patients to listen to your complaint. Once he has listened to them, he should be able to talk in an understandable language, not just medical jargon. This It should be understandable to the patient. It should reach his understanding. Only then the patient will realize, ah, I think that you're saying right, doctor. And then he should behave 
like a good human being and convince the patient of the necessity of a particular treatment or of a particular investigation. Anytime a general practitioner special writes an investigation, the patient takes it carelessly. Abhi to main lag hai, main nahi karai. After six months, he comes back and goes, so I have a problem. See, six months back, I told you get this investigation. You did not get that. Get it done. So that was the specialist and the doctor uh, patient relation. But with the family doctor is different. He will advise you the necessity of doing that investigation and what would happen if you do not get it done. So both facts there. Now it is for the patient to decide finally whether his social, his economic state allows him or not, whether he can go beyond that. And he has to do some extra efforts to get, get those uh, investigations done or that treatment done. So this should be the ability of the family doctor also to see that the patient is motivated enough to realize what is happening and what should be done. This are the qualities of a very good family doctor. Okay. These are the best qualities of a good family doctor. So now question number three, why should we have a family doctor? So many qualities which we discussed now about the family doctor can be summarized in a few words, which will again uh, tell us why we really need a family. So we saw that the first and the most important thing is that the family doctor knows your life cycle. Not only your life cycle, but also your family's life cycle. He has been watching you since your birth, how you grow, how, how you have been performing at school, how you have been interacting with your, with your friends, with your family members, how your family members are treating you, how they are bringing you up, what is the social and the economic status of your family, how much level of understanding is there in the family about health issues. So he is abreast and aware of everything that is going on in the family. So he knows the life cycle. So he will be the best judge always to guide you in even smaller issues. And what sometimes we think is a major may not really be so major if the family doctor is very keen and observant. Then he knows your personal and family history also. Not only your history, your family history has also to be known. Um, like suppose there is a family member who has a particular type of a disease, say cancer. Was there long time back, was treated. Now, okay, or whatever has happened, but the history is there. A member of the family now comes to the doctor and says, Doctor, mujhe ye ye ho hai. which the doctor may think is also apparently cancerous in nature. He will immediately catch the issue because he will know that there is a family history in your family. So you have a tendency of getting it done. So go for these investigations immediately. Do not please waste time. Come back with the results and we'll assess. So because he knows the family history, he will be able to press upon you or impress upon you the need to go for a particular investigation and arrive at a diagnosis at an early stage. This is the benefit of a family dog and the, uh, the, and the uh, fact that he has the knowledge of your family history also. So he feeds, he feeds not you, he's feeding you more than what you're thinking. A general practitioner would perhaps have to have assess you all over from beginning to end to understand where you you are going or what is happening to you. But family doctor can get it in the blink of an eye. And yes, this happened once in your family and this is a, a disease of this nature that it runs in family. So you would probably also be having it. Let us rule it out. Let us find it out. So he treats, but he treats more than what you are thinking. He is treating not you, but your, your, your psyche also and your family also. Then accordingly, he would help you find a, a specialist also and thereby he is improving the quality of your life, of your family life also, and thereby also saving your money. There's so many benefits of having a family doctor. We must have a family. We should not be changing doctors now and then because every time a new doctor, every time a new approach, and then it becomes what we call a kitchen treatment. Family doctors always understanding, aware of your issues and he will be able to guide you to the specific treatment very and very easily. 
Great. Uh, question number four. What are the essential roles of a family doctor? We will again here compare a general doctor with a family. You go to the general doctor, you said you have fever, you have sad, you have cough and cold, he will diagnose flu, you still have your treatment, you go back home. But it's not so with a family doctor. He has a very important role here to play, preventive medicine. He will not only treat you for the flu, but he will assess the reason why it has happened in your family and how you should prevent it in future. So preventive um, education and health education, specifically, is, um, sorry, there was an interruption. Preventive uh, medicine and health awareness is created by the family doctor in your family. So that is a very, very important role. Not only that, you would also treat the associated mental and emotional needs of the family. He, because he knows your family, he knows what uh, tensions are involved in upbringing of a child, what tensions are involved when there is a pregnancy in the family, what tensions are involved when an old person is becoming sick or getting bedridden, what tensions are involved when there is, um, a, say, a fracture in a member of the family. He would also help them for managing stress in your family. Anger management. He, he knows what is the nature of this boy who is coming to me, very short tempered, does not listen to his parents also. Parents may just come to the doctor and say, Doctor, you know, I don't But then the doctor knows that this is, he has been observing him since his childhood, so he will accordingly manage the uh, anger situation also and gradually tackle the child. Then, there are issues of nutrition in the family. People have various nutrition issues. Family Eating habits are different in the family. Lifestyle man management is also very important. So the doctor knows what is important in your family. You go to the doctor with acidity, a general practitioner will just like your few medicines, but the family doctor knows your family. So he will advise you an appropriate diet and a lifestyle to avoid uh, digestive disorders. So, Weight control is again a very important issue because he's observing you lifelong. He will advise you accordingly what you should do to keep your weight under control and the associated complications of weight will be explained to you. Weight and nutrition are there. Fertility issues. People having difficulty in having issues. The family doctor knows this family is going through this stress. Every time they go to him, he will counsel them. He will not just write the medicines or send them to the specialist. Even if he does refer to the specialist, he will still remain associated with the family and see that their emotional aspect is also addressed appropriately. Then there are childhood issues as we spoke. So these are some very important things which uh, the family doctor is playing in your family. Then apart from the other things like uh, common infections, viral infections, bacterial infections, he does the vaccinations and immunization, he monitors. There are certain chronic illnesses in the family like diabetes, hypertension, asthma. They run in families and run all in. Once a patient is diabetes, he is diabetic for all ways. So the family doctor will keep on guiding him from uh, time to time. See, this is the reason why your diabetes is now uh, disturbed. You need to attend to your diet. You need to attend to your stress levels. You need to such, so such small things. Only a family doctor can do, not a general practitioner or any specialist. They do not even have that much time to attain to. And another very important thing is diagnosing emerging conditions. Like we spoke uh, uh, previously, because he knows the family history, he knows what is going on. See, a female, young female, maybe 25, 30, goes to the doctor. Doctor, I um, if there is family history of a, a mother or a nanny or a mossy having also breast pain lump and was treated for maybe cancer of the breast, he will immediately advise the, the patient to go for appropriate investigations and he will even guide the family, telling them that these cancerous lesions run in families. There is a tendency. But doctor, this is very young. How will it happen? 
not necessarily even young patients can sometimes have it because there is a history in their family. Otherwise, if this is not impressed upon the family, the family members will not take it seriously. So it has to be timely and appropriately impressed. But that can only be done because the family doctor is already knowing your family history and he can press upon a, uh, the necessity of the investigation. Otherwise, patients don't get away from them. Then they don't come. 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 By the time they come back, it is already advanced. So it is out of treatment range. So these are things that the family doctor will do because he has been associated with you as a family member now and he is empathetic for you. He is concerned for you. This a general practitioner would not do, a specialist would not do. They will um, wind up the relation when the treatment, treatment is concerned, uh, is uh, finished, or when the diagnosis is done. So, this is a very, very important Two of these are very important things to rule with the uh, family doctor is playing. One is that the emotional needs of the family, and second, diagnosing things in the initial stages. That is very, very important. So, overall, they form the family doctor is the backbone of your family, family health rather. He not only guides you, observes you, but once he has advised you a treatment or he has advised you some reference, maybe to a, a specialist, to a dietitian, to a physiotherapist, he coordinates the treatment for all and then squeezes out the best for you. And now he will tell you, see, whatever that doctor is told, what the, that doctor, we will summarize all, and now this is the way we need to follow it. So you have a more customized treatment, and uh, you need not feel uh, stressed out or confused about what and how to follow. These are the very important roles that the family doctor would play. Okay. Now the fifth question, uh, what are the current day adversities of family practice? Uh, these days, the family doctor concept has uh, been changing also. Other family doctors are still there, and the, the patients also uh, love to have family doctors. But then the society has changed a lot. And the most important uh, loss which the patient feels at these days is that the doctor is not available 24-7. Initially, the family doctor or any doctor would be available the moment you give him a phone call. Oh, yes, even at 2 o'clock in the night. But now, commercialization and many other factors also, exploitation of the available facilities has led to restricted availability of doctors. And this unpleasant factor has just certainly creeped in. Another important um, factor is the internet. People educate themselves on the internet. They come to the doctor, Dr. Mujapai. How do you know? You have not been able to examine yourself. I have read the internet, these symptoms are written, they are matching with the symptoms that I have, so Mujapai. When the doctor examines, he said, you don't have to pay. You don't have to pay. You don't have to pay. So much of confusion. See, internet may be helpful. You should go ahead, but you should not rely on it. But these are specialities, and the doctor does not become a specialist overnight. He has to go through so many years of reading, learning, and practice to even himself be able to perfect at a particular diagnosis. How can a patient read a single page on the internet and make a diagnosis of them? It is not possible. But when, they, when there are certain patients who put, put questions to the doctor based on their internet observation, and they are sometimes so absurd that the doctor feels very irritated when he's answering them. He's not able to explain to them the uh, position that he really has and uh, how he should come out of this misguided information on the internet. This is very important. A very, very important fact these days is that the corporate culture of health practice, I think hospitals, are also, in a way, diminishing the importance of family practice. So corporates are only commercial setups. You need to go. It's not that you go to very big hospitals so you're uh, getting the best of treatment, not necessarily. It is the, ultimately the doctor there who is attending to you. The doctor has to be. But then in corporates, 
these doctors have also got their limitations because they are working for an institution. They're not, not working for themselves or for, for the family. They're working for the institution. So there are so many limitations. So we must realize uh, these things that uh, corporates cannot always be very helpful, no matter how much money we spend. Paisa hi hamesha sehat nahi de sakta hai. This is how it proves. It is faith. It is faith and ultimately it is a good bond of trust between the doctor and the patient that will lead you to a satisfactory health status for your own family. Your health, my health is not only your and my health. We have so much to do with our families also. So the family health is very important. And once the whole family is oriented towards a healthy attitude, a healthy lifestyle, every individual of the family will also be well educated about his own health status. But then the supervision has to be done by a specialist, and that is the family doctor. That is where the bond of trust matters. Thank you. So, uh, one or two more questions okay. I want voice. to I'm not getting a voice. Am I audible? I'm not getting a voice. Wait. Now? Yeah, now I'm getting it. Okay. Actually, uh, I'm having two, three questions. It's uh, related about the career uh, opportunities for the students. And uh, the second, I just want to ask for the women. Like, uh, what are the opportunities for students and women in this field? Like for a doctor or a surgeon? How can uh, they become a doctor or a surgeon? Like uh, students ke liye ye hai ki after 11, 12, they can choose their career uh, in this field. But what about the women? Be it uh, boys or girls. The first thing that we must realize is that uh, to become a doctor, you must be prepared to do a lot of hard work. The WHO has also proved in one of its research uh, papers a few years back that medical education is the toughest of all education. So first of all, you must be prepared. You must not think that I will study a little bit, a little bit, and I will become a doctor. I have to practice a little limited practice. Karna hai. No. Even a small disease, which may apparently looks small, has got a lot of in-depth issues. To understand a virus, a flu also requires a lot of reading, a lot of observation. Simply saying, no, it's a flu, hai, bukhar hai. We, uh, by hearsay evidence, ki rest, karo, ye karo, bukhar ki goli le lo, ho jaoge. Yes, theek ho jate hai. But there's a lot which goes into, into it to understand. The problem comes when these get complicated. And how to understand uh, that this is really going towards a complication where it needs to be interfered with and where more advanced treatments are required. This is where medical education comes in. This is the difference also between a quack and a trained specialist. So you should be prepared for real hard work. You should be prepared to sacrifice family life. You should be prepared to sacrifice all your enjoyment. And do not work just for money. Work for a patient. This is medical education is not just a profession. It's more than a profession. Because treating the sick requires an attitude of empathy. It is not just the care which goes behind it is more important than the medicine itself. So as it is always said, I treat the he cures. So I'm just writing medicine. That's the cure is coming from somewhere else. Something else is working there. This spiritual connection has to be understood. So the qualities of a doctor should be empathy and spirituality. Specialists may be treating particular organs or particular diseases, but holistic medicine is still the aim of a good doctor. Even if a person is a specialist, he has to keep in back of the mind that the he is not treating that particular organ or disease. He has to treat and satisfy the patient. This is very well observed in females. 
So females can become very good doctor if uh, they can keep aside the commercial. But then the family life of a female is also binding. They have to think their families and their children, their, uh, their spouse. How would they be able to manage it is a very important uh, issue which they have to balance in life so that um, the family is kept equally attended to while they are practicing. They must go for a medical education. Some fields are as if just for just made for females, like gynecology and obstetrics in our country, at least. In the you know, Western countries and other countries, you have more male uh, obstetricians than gynecologists. But here, we have females who are doing it very nicely. We have child specialists, again, uh, could be attended very well by female uh, females who want to become doctors. And then there are certain non clinical branches, pathology, radiology, uh, which can also be taken up by females that uh, you, know, you could do justice to the field there. Okay. So, my last question. Like, uh, as you are really fit in this age, so at last, uh, please give us some tips to be healthy and fit. Lifestyle is the most important. Part. No matter what people tell you, ye khao, wo khao, aisa karo, ye exercise karo, wo exercise karo. You have to have a very peaceful life lifestyle. And to have a peaceful lifestyle, you have to give time, devote time to your own self. Get up in the morning, it's eight o'clock, have a quick bath, rush to the office, come back at 10 o'clock in the night, and that too, along with more files, working overnight. This is just work, 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 and ultimately um, we become crazy. We lose out on our own personal self. Our digestive system becomes disturbed because we do not have an appropriate time for eating. We do not know what exactly we're eating. We are eating food on the run. We have office packets to eat. We don't relax while we are eating. We are talking while we are eating. We have meetings while we are eating. We have no time for exercise also. And after a few years of your life, once you cross, say, 40, 45, you realize that now we have reached a point of no return. You cannot now return to that healthy state which you had imagined you wanted to be. We think initially that we will be doing a lot of hard work now. Once we are established now, then we will start doing, uh, having a life of our own enjoyment. But then we see that once you are into this, your way of Working is uh, more uh, affecting your lifestyle. You think that earning is the only aim in life, then these other things become very much neglected. So right from day one, even a young child, a young adolescent, youngsters, middle-aged people, all should realize that these things should be, to be done right from day one, not after a particular stage or not after a particular aim. They are a um, daily part of your life. Have to be essentially incorporated every day in and out. So first thing in the morning, get up, sit to yourself. Even if you're having tea or milk or whatever, but sit and ruminate, meditate. Maybe for 10 minutes, maybe for 15 minutes. That will give you a lot of time to gather yourself. All your violent thoughts, thoughts that are running here and there, they all have to be given a direction and a concentrated approach to your working of the day. This will happen only once you sit to meditate and organize your day. Meditation people use as a uh, tool for mental relaxation only. It is not just a mental relaxation, it is more to that. It is giving you a spiritual approach in your day-to-day -day activities also. It may relax us mentally, but then we realize through meditation only that what is the significance of spirituality in our life 
every day, not only in my personal life, but in the work that I'm doing in my office, that in my interactions with the people, there is also uh, this spirituality which helps in doing it in the right way. WHO has defined health as not only the physical and mental uh, status of uh, uh, good health, but they have now incorporated spirituality also. So a person who is mentally, physically, and spiritually sound, only he is really healthy. So the spiritual part has been neglected by all of us now. We need to attend it. Spirituality does not necessarily mean going to a temple or sitting and doing some puja. Spirituality means actually understanding the human nature and how human nature can be tackled in such a way that it does not even disturb your own self, nor does it disturb other people. And yet, at the same time, you're able to handle efficiently all the people around you and all the work around you in a given um, period of time or in a given uh, workplace. So understand the importance of your physical health, exercising, maybe yoga, maybe uh, gym, whatever you want to do, uh, mental health, uh, mental health by meditation, and spiritual health, spiritual health by uh, reading the spiritual text and understanding the object uh, of human nature and how to tackle human nature. Only then you would feel healthy. Because it's always stress and stress and stress. And stress. Okay, uh, so at last I am uh, not I'm briefing, but at last like uh, the point is uh, bond of trust. And you have said that faith should be done on my family doctor. Par. So, a line is, I mean, my nana says that when I look at my doctor, I feel that my 50% of my disease is fine. So, uh, this is why we say that the doctor should have faith in them, and should have believed in them, that what they are saying is absolutely right. And we should trust that we don't have to do it. Like, because what happens is that many people are like this, that we divert our mind. That, no, your doctor has done this, but in real life, this is also happening. People have to manipulate people in real life. People have to manipulate but the thing is ki jo doctor hai un par hamara jo believe hona chahiye wo ekdam 100% hona chahiye ki jo wo keh rahe hain wo sahi hoga uh, now at last uh, i wanted uh, i want ki up two three lines mein uh, session brief kare health issues should be dealt with always under supervision never 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 Take it upon yourself and say, ये तो दादी माँ के नुस्खे हैं, ये तो दादाजी के नुस्खे हैं, पुराने नुस्खे हैं. Yes, they are good. Ayurveda was also is a very good science. Homeopathy is also a very good science. But then you should have a sound background for that. Some supervision who can tell you what to do and how to do it. Never, never take any medical um, treatment or decision without proper supervision or guidance of an expert. Okay, so thank you so much, sir, for coming on EduCreates platform. Thank you so much for giving your precious time. Thank, thank you. you.